Good. Here we go. Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to our new school year, 2018-2019 and today to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, August 28, 2018 and I would appreciate if everyone would turn off their cell phones as this meeting is being recorded. Um, Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Good evening everyone and welcome back to the school year. Mr. Cassio? Mrs. Fitzpatrick? I know they're both, they're not here. Okay. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And soon to be sworn in, Ms. Evans? Yeah, we Mrs. will do Evans? that in a minute. We'll do that, okay. All present. Thank you. And so the board invites the Hamner Boy Scouts to come on up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come right up to the front here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. Thank you. We'll have you up in a few more minutes. Um, our meeting tonight will begin with a swearing in of our newest board member, Kelly Haley Evans. Our town clerk, Dolores Asano, will do the swearing in. If Kelly and Dolores would come on up front here. Go ahead, right there would be great. According to the Constitution of the United States, according to the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, and the Charter of the Town of the Town of Wethersfield, the Charter and the Charter of the Town of Wethersfield. To the best of your ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly, if you come on up and take your seat. <laughs> yeah, we're not. <laughs> The party's okay. over. Yeah. <laughs> You're not work right away. That's a good line. You're no longer a civilian. <laughs> and thank you, Dolores. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on with our meeting. Um, Mr. Emmett, we have some important recognitions tonight. We do. Um, if I could please have Miss Polly Moon come up to the podium. Certainly as uh, superintendent of schools, I've had the uh, privilege and the honor of working with Polly Moon. Um, she served on the board for, I believe, the past six years. Her level-headedness, her commitment to the students of the Wethersfield Public Schools has been unwavering. I, for one, will dearly miss her, and I say heartfelt thank you and great appreciation for what you've done for this district. You have left a great legacy for the Wethersfield Public Schools. Thank you, Polly. And Paul, I have a few words here for you. You know, when we were young, there were a few women who I really admired. Babe Diedrichson was one, and golf makes her one. That's no brainer. But there were also women in politics that I admired, especially as a young student, and her name was Margaret Chase Smith. Smith was the first woman to serve in both houses of the US Congress and was also the first woman to be placed in nomination for the presidency. She was a strong lady, not afraid to take on McCarthyism or smoke-filled backroom politics where women weren't especially welcomed. Well, we've come a long way from the days of Margaret Chase Smith, haven't we? But there is something she once said about public service that particularly reminds me of you. And she said, I quote, 
Public service must be more than doing a job efficiently and honestly. It must be a complete dedication to the people and to the nation. Well, Polly, I think if we added the word community to that quote, it would define your legacy. So I want to share a secret with you tonight as you move on from the Board of Ed, where you have made such an enormous contribution to the success of our school system, and moving on to the position of Vice Chair of the Weathersfield Democratic Party. Polly, you are another woman I greatly admire. For all you have done for our community, and especially our students, we owe you so much. So on behalf of the board, allow me to thank you again, to congratulate you, and to wish you continued success. We're not only going to be rooting for you, but we also will take great satisfaction in knowing that you'll always have our backs. So in here, for you as a parting memento, is a little token of our appreciation that needs little explanation. It's a crystal apple, the prize of every educator. So here you go, Paul. Thank you so much. I just want to say I noticed that it's Babe Dietrichson right. who you admire for golf I and do. not me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. We were well partners once. <laughs> So I just hope that I don't lose my place on the uh, Board of Ed golf team no, going forward. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. That means an awful lot to me. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, and Michael, we have some other recognitions tonight too. We do. Um, I recently received an email from a parent at Hanmer Elementary School um, talking about an exciting project that one of our Boy Scout groups was working on. And uh, I was talking with Mrs. Murphy, my faithful assistant. She said, hey, this would be a good idea to have them come to a board meeting and talk about it. So they are here to talk about their project. I think you'll find it very interesting and it certainly aligns with our civic goal here for the Weathersfield Public Schools. So I can have our um, Boy Scouts from Hanmer come out up to the podium. My name is James Hacker. And my name is Rohe Williams. James, where are you from? And, oh and we're with Pack 33 at Hanmer Elementary. At Hanmer Elementary. What's your project? We are going to make a free um, library by our kindness rocks outside of the gym. Why are you doing it? To do our best. To do our best and help people at all times. Is why you want to build it. Is why we want to build it. And also mentally awake. And also mentally awake. And we want, also want people to read and be better. This is where it's going to go. This is what it's going to look like. It'll be done by the end of October. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, are you building it? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Thank you. And where are you going to get the books from for this? It, Oh, mom's coming. That's okay. Hi, I'm Christina Williams, and I'm his mom. Um, so we wanted to build a little mini library near Hamner, near the Kindness Rocks, and collect the books. We already have some books in the media center, but we wanted to add some multicultural books and other options for families and, and young children and just kind of have an expansion of that. So parents are going to uh, donate it. We already have some books, and um, they're going to run it until they're in sixth grade, and we're hoping that the next troop can do that and maybe collaborate with the Girl Scouts as well. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you you're very welcome. much. That's excellent. Great So project. if we bring books to Hamner's office as board members, because yes. uh, I had ones that size and I never cleaned them out. They're still in the house. Yeah. I, I can just bring them to the Hamner office. Yeah. We're hopefully we'll have some boxes. We okay. want some newer stuff and, and a var variation of stuff. You know what I mean? Just want corduroy. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. We just wanted a, <laughs> I don't, sorry, you know, because I have my own, but I wanted to, you know, kind of, you know, make some other choices, some yeah. science, nonfiction, things like that, mm -hmm. so that it goes with the curriculum. Thanks. Wonderful Thank idea. Thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Good luck on that. I'll be looking forward to seeing that. All right. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on June 26, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of minutes for a special Board of Ed meeting on July 23rd, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. I was okay. elsewhere. Oh, he wasn't so here. Annoying. Those minutes are approved. So is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, we'll move on. Mr. Emmett, you have communication to share tonight. I certainly uh -huh. do. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's back to school time. Uh, it's that moment that you've been waiting for or perhaps dreading. First day of school is this Thursday, and we are certainly ready to go for what promises to be a great 2018-2019 school year. It's a good time to remind members of the community to be alert for school buses and drive with caution around our school buildings. Please be patient as the bus drivers settle into their routes and manage their way around several big construction projects going on around town. It's also a good time to welcome back our crossing guards. Um, the crossing guards will fall under the Board of Ed payroll this year, along with the Board of Ed uh, staff being responsible for time and attendance. The WPD will continue to provide training and staff posts uh, around town. I had the opportunity to meet with each of the guards at training last week, and they are a group of individuals who take their jobs very seriously. And please be aware that our crossing guards are there to provide our kids a safe uh, environment and heed the direction and stop in order to ensure those uh, students are safe. I wanna talk with you a little bit about administrative changes. With the new year that's come upon us, uh, we have some changes in the administrative ranks. To fill a long-standing need in the curriculum office, uh, Michael Verderam has moved from Webb Elementary School uh, to Stillman, where he will be working as an instructional supervisor and supporting us with regard to curriculum and instruction. Filling the role at Webb, we welcome back Margaret Sakay, um, former principal at Hanmer Elementary School. Melissa Cook, our special ed supervisor, has left the district for a position in West Hartford. We expect to have this position filled very shortly. We have a candidate currently going through the reference process now. Dr. Diana DeVivo um, has departed the Wethersfield High School to take an assistant principal position at Avon High School. This position has been posted as of last Friday. Uh, currently, this morning, we had approximately 74 candidates that had applied. Uh, this afternoon, we were up to uh, more than 85, so we have a very strong pool there. 
Um, also, Silas Dean will be saying farewell to Principal Sue Zapla. Uh, Sue will be leaving us on October 1st um, to become the new principal at Rockville High School. Um, we're certainly sad to see Sue depart us, but um, given the fact that she'll be with us through the start of the school year and in through September, this will give us ample time to transition to an interim and begin the process um, for focus groups for the uh, selection of the next principal at Silas Dean. In addition to that, we have a lot of new staff members. Um, we had convocation this morning, and uh, just to give you an idea of what we do over the course of the summer, our new staff members include Kate Barrett, Hammer Elementary School, Grade 3. Christine Bartolotta, Hammer Elementary School, Lunch Aid. Michael Bennett, Webb Elementary School, Paraprofessional. Sandra Blancazo, Weathersfield High School, Computer Lab. Michelle Borsell, Charles Wright Elementary School, Reading Consultant. Shirlene Salona, Lunch Aid. Melissa Sarah, Paraprofessional. Kelly Shagnon, Reading Tutor at Hammer. Deirdre Clabby, coming back as our preschool teacher at Webb. Very glad to have her back. Kelly Conroy will be a psychologist splitting between Weathersfield High School and Silas Dean Middle School. Barbara Cardone comes in as an occupational therapist. Walter Cullop, Charles Wright and Hanmer Music. Mark Danaher, WHS WTA School Counselor, our career coordinator. Michelle Elliott, Weathersfield High School Clerk. Sarah Horvath, Weathersfield High School Math, long-term sub. Ramajit Kaur, Weathersfield High School Science. Aaron Kennedy, Webb Paraprofessional. Kimberly Kiefer, Special Education at Webb. Megan Kilbride, Paraprofessional at Webb. Sabrina Klin, Lunch Aid. Jessica La, Special Education at Hanmer. Kirsten Milios, Grade 3, Webb. Kristen Moreno, ABA Special Education at Webb. Jason Moriarty, Elementary, uh, Emerson Williams Elementary School Paraprofessional. Michael Nye, Paraprofessional, Weathersfield High School. Erica Nepal, Hanmer, Grade 3. Justin Ottaviano, Charles Wright and Hanmer, Music. Ros Rosalia Polino, Emerson Williams, EL Teacher. Jordan Richard, Webb, Paraprofessional. Sophia Rodriguez, Charles Wright, Paraprofessional. Jill Salinardi, Hanmer, Paraprofessional. Glory V. Sanabria Cologne, Hanmer, Lunch Aid. Ashley Shadler, Webb, EL Tutor. Tara Surface, High Crest Elementary School, Great Kindergarten. Pat Stratton, we welcome back Pat, former math teacher, now guidance counselor at Silas Dean Middle School. Mm -hmm. Megan Westbrook, Webb, Grade 6. And Ryan Martin, long term Spanish teacher at Weathersfield High School. And now you know what we did during the course of the summer. Um, certainly a busy time. We do have several other positions that we are in the process of looking to fill, including a BCBA position um, for our two new in-house special ed programs, as well as a variety of paraprofessionals um, as well. In terms of the heat, just to let you know, um, we expect to open on time and carry out full instructional days on Thursday and Friday this week. Um, this week, we have altered our athletic practice schedules um, to include uh, cancellation of some soccer scrimmages. Um, obviously, Mr. Maltesi is um, keeping the coaches informed about making sure kids are hydrated. And I know our football team has made adjustments and not gone with pads, just going with, uh, with helmets to stay cool. Um, all of our buildings are air conditioned at least to some degree in those buildings that have only partial air conditioning principals and teachers make the adjustment during the course of the day so that may mean that at Hanmer school for example in the um, auditorium or the cafetorium if you will very hot there they may eat in the classrooms where it's cool so um, we'll make the adjustments but we'll get through this heat wave and by January we'll be wishing it was as warm <laughs> as it is right now I um, want to bring you up Always. to speed on the uh, Board of Ed student rep Weathersfield High School school will be electing the next Board of Education representative once school resumes uh, in the next week. I expect that our student rep will be in attendance uh, with us at the September 11th board meeting. Uh, we're actively monitoring, as you know, you've been getting them on a weekly basis, the class size numbers. Uh, it's that time of year and we're closely monitoring class sizes. Um, it is our intent to get the school year started and do a count of students physically present. We are looking at some bubbles in the kindergarten uh, ranks at this point in time. Uh, as we see the number of students physically present, we'll assess the need for additional adult support. Um, and we currently at this time do not see any class sections at the elementary level that will be able to collapse to create a new teaching position. So we'll be looking at um, potentially paraprofessional or tutor support in these classrooms should it be needed. I will also say that we are currently in that moving stage where I have kids coming in. 
I have kids going out. Um, we have two residency issues, uh, one including a fraudulent lease and another um, a family not residing in Wethersfield that were both kindergarten students that will not be coming to the Wethersfield Public Schools. So we'll monitor those numbers. I'll have uh, up-to-date physical numbers for you on Friday in the uh, update, and we'll make the adjustments uh, as time rolls on. Our one-to-one -one rollout is well underway. Um, I was over at Silas Dean late last week, and we had the Link Crew Day where our seventh graders got their uh, Chromebooks. The look of excitement on the faces of these kids when they were told that they could actually take them home. It was, it was unbelievable. Um, in addition to getting the Chromebooks, they actually got a lesson in digital citizenship from Leslie Poulos, our teacher over at um, Silas Dean. And in addition to that, on Thursday, they will have a session on social media and acceptable use with Scott Driscoll courtesy of um, the Weathersfield Creative Arts Council. So um, we're rolling out. Tomorrow, uh, those of you uh, who are incoming freshmen at uh, Weathersfield High School, you will get Chromebooks tomorrow. And then we'll roll out to grades 8, uh, 10, 11, 12 within the next couple days. I cannot say enough for the um, IT department and the Weathersfield Public Schools, the work that they've done in terms of coding all of these uh, Chromebooks in, making sure that they all have the uh, antivirus software, they all have our filter system on it, and all of the proprietary software. These um, machines are ready to go. And talking with teachers, they're extraordinarily excited over the fact that they have this technology at their fingertips. Um, in terms of, moving right along, Open houses, I certainly want to let people know, we'll be putting this up on uh, the website front and center. We've got open houses coming up very quickly. Weathersfield High School, September 5th at 6.30 p.m. Silas Dean, grade seven, September 4th at 6.30. Grade eight goes on September 6th at 6.30. For pre-K, a.m. pre-K, September 12th at five, followed by pre-K uh, pre p.m., September 12th at 5.30. Webb K-6 goes September 13th at 6.30. Hanmer, Emerson Williams, Charles Wright, and Highcrest will do K-3 to on September 12th at 6.30. Grades 4 through 6, September 13th at 6.30. So we'll have that up on the website, and we're certainly looking forward to seeing parents coming out and seeing what's going on in our schools. Convocation took place this morning at the high school. Um, this is a traditional event that allows us to kick off the school year on a positive note and get the message out. Uh, included uh, in today's agenda was the presentation of peer awards and year of service awards. Peer award winners included Pam Jones, Rochelle Efland, Lisa Helvey, Joanne Campbell, Stacy Malanguagio, Melissa Perry, Emily Caravella, and Joanna Fitzgerald. For our years of service awards, An, uh, Ann Trinkus, Madame, if you will, from the high school, and Suzanne uh, Kolachenko were recognized for 30 years of service. For 40 years of service, we recognized Karen Janey of Emerson Williams. And we had a 45 year uh, of service award that went out to um, Richard Scapetto, SCO, who started teaching in 1973 when Mr. Emmett was in kindergarten. So, oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, again, I will say with, with regard to SCO, uh, going over to the Thanksgiving um, football games, all of the people are always gathered around. When the alumni come back, they come back to say hi to Skull. So he certainly had a great uh, experience and, and certainly made his mark here in Wethersfield. So we congratulate all of our uh, Year of Service Award winners. Professional development uh, takes place tomorrow. Um, we have 25 different PD sessions geared toward a variety of topics such as curriculum and instruction, school improvement planning, crisis management, cultural awareness, legislative updates, science standards, and SRBI, to name a few. I had a very exciting meeting today with members of the appellate court. Um, this is a very exciting event that's going to be taking place. I um, have to give out props to uh, Councilman Matthew Forrest, who um, really hatched this idea and has been working on it for a while. So uh, Weathersfield High School will be hosting an actual court session coming up the week of April 22nd, where um, arguments will be heard in the Weathersfield High School auditorium before a panel of judges. This will be an opportunity for our students to get a hands-on look mm -hmm. and a realistic look at the court process and how things work. Um, we're looking forward to having a question and answer session with attorneys. Um, students will have the opportunity to hear arguments in two cases, one being a civil case and one being a criminal case. 
So I'll have a lot more information uh, for you on this as it gets closer. But again, it's the week of um, April 22nd. That's great. And uh, finally today, we had a meet and greet. It was the annual uh, day where kids get to come out and meet their teachers. And uh, I happened to be over at Highcrest dealing with the situation with uh, bees. Uh, the bees are being addressed, not to worry. <laughs> uh, but I also had the opportunity to see a lot of excited students, parents, and staff happy to be back and ready for the school, uh, new school year. So I say, uh, welcome back, students. We can't wait to see you. And we'll see you bright and early on Thursday morning. Um, and with that, that's communications. Thank you. Any questions for Michael? That was a lot. And are you doing these two? Matt will do this one. I'll do that okay. one. Okay. All right. We do, do not have any action items on our agenda tonight, but we do have a budget update and a 2018 summer facilities project update. Matt, would you come on up? Thank you. Good evening. Prior to the meeting, we had a finance committee meeting and we discussed the 1718 fiscal year. We have a unaudited projected surplus of 19257 for the year. In 1617, we had a surplus of 20,915. So pretty consistent between the two fiscal years. Uh, what's driving that? We discussed throughout the year we had a lot of uh, unpaid FMLA, new teacher hires coming in at a lower rate that, than resignations and retirements. We also discussed the special ed tuition and transportation outplacements throughout the year. There was nothing that really attributed the um, $20,000 surplus. In May, we had projected a $5,000 deficit. This flip of about $25,000 was really just year-end invoices coming in a little bit under than what we had encumbered on our purchase orders. So that's where we stand at this time. Any questions for Matthew? I just have to say that was a Herculean effort last year to get that budget to come in. Um, we ended up with a 0.75 increase you over um, our original. And that really goes to the staff and the administration as well. Yep. We, we had a freeze and we also had a cap throughout the year, so they did a great job managing their budgets. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have our 2018 Summer Facilities Project update. Michael? I'll come up to the podium for this one. Now, I do not have a slideshow of 25 pictures of the freshly waxed floors like you've seen in the past, um, but I will uh, give you an update exactly as to where we are with um, our facilities. Um, this summer, as you know, we embarked upon the shared services model, um, and we have rolled that out over the course of the summer. Uh, we hired a uh, custodial maintenance supervisor um, a town position. Uh, the individual was with us for approximately three to four weeks and then left. Uh, we have seen the position reposted by the town. We had uh, interviews last week. We have not yet found a candidate that um, suits our expectations and we have gone out again. With that being said, it has not um, lessened our commitment whatsoever to making sure that our buildings are clean, safe, and ready to go. In terms of projects that we were talking about over the course of the summer, we were looking at several capital improvement projects. Those included removal of carpet and uh, placement of vinyl composite tiles, um, as well as some window filming. Uh, this ended up being put on hold um, to put forth the effort on removing the oil tanks. Um, we have oil tanks at three of our buildings, Hammer. Uh, Emerson Williams and Webb Elementary Schools and the certification for these tanks had expired in some cases or were on the verge of expiring. There's a 30-year window on these tanks and then at that point in time they must be abandoned appropriately or um, removed. Um, early in the summer the tanks were inspected and the tanks were drained of any product that was left. Um, I've been in Weathersfield since 2008 and we have never utilized fuel oil. Um, we had switched over to natural gas, so uh, the tanks were largely empty to begin with. I'm uh, very happy to say the tank at Hanmer is already out. Um, it came out last week. Um, we found no issues with regard to uh, any leakage. It came out whole, um, and it was a metal tank and looked actually looked surprisingly good. Uh, the hole has been filled at this point in time, so we're ready to go at Hanmer. Emerson Williams was a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, Emerson Williams tank actually went in in 1989. It's a 10,000 gallon tank and it was fiberglass, not even metal. 
Um, I happened to be over there taking some pictures to send to you for Friday update and was watching them uh, move the tank. And as they moved the tank, we had some erosion of um, earth and what was exposed but a, a gas line that was not on the original plan. Work stopped, CNG came out, um, assessed the situation, um, and they were able to de-energize the line and purge it. So the tank has been removed, no issues with the uh, gas line whatsoever. Again, uh, hats off to the gentleman that was running the backhoe. Uh, clearly saw it, immediately stopped, so no damage there. Tank is out on its way and, and gone. Um, the hole has already been filled in, so we're ready to go at Emerson. So Mike, that, that, yes. ga that gas line, do you have any idea or does anybody have idea where it comes from or where why it was there at all? It actually feeds the rooftop units oh, okay. um, for heating and air conditioning. Okay. So okay. knowing that the tank went in in 1989, I have to assume, knowing the, seeing where the yeah, tank was buried, it. yeah. it's likely that the gas line went in after okay. the oil tank. Okay. So right now the equipment is staged over at Webb. We expect that the tank will come out at Webb tomorrow. It's not going to have any direct impact on any parking um, it's off in the back and obviously students not in yet we should be able to get it out um, they've made very quick work of those so that's been a good piece we've done some other um, work uh, over the course of the summer with sidewalks over at web they were working on the sidewalks today I understand that we had an issue with some people walking through the freshly laid sidewalk today so I've talked with Sally Katz and we're checking on that um, in addition to that, in terms of all of our buildings, um, the cleaning procedure has gone flawlessly. I cannot say enough good about our custodial and maintenance staff. And in spite of the trials and tribulations of moving to this new model, their focus has been there. Um, and I have to say, Sally Katz has responded wonderfully when it comes to how the buildings look outside. Um, you go around the buildings, you see the high school, for example. The entrance looks stunning. It, it just... Mulch. It's, it's beautiful, and I think it's a real testament to the spirit of working together. So very pleased with that. And um, again, other projects that are coming up uh, in the future uh, at this point in time, we do hope to do some um, carpet replacement with VCT. Um, we are currently working on a repair at Charles Wright. We had the gym floor buckle. Um, we think it was just due to the humidity. So um, that is a cost of $29,000. And it was one of those things. It's twenty nine thousand to repair it, or it was one hundred twelve thousand five hundred to replace it, and it just wasn't feasible. And it actually had to come up, so there was a section that was bare floor, so it had to be addressed. So it was addressed. That is. Finished. It's being addressed now at this okay. point in time, Elaine. So might, what's going to what's going to happen with that is um, the contractor is on board. We're waiting for the wood to get there. Mm -hmm. So the gym teacher, uh, Jim Corsi, um, he's been around the block before. He dealt with gym floor problems over yeah, at Emerson yeah. Williams. Um, so we have an alternate plan um, to get the school year started, but we expect that the repair is uh, is imminent and the kids will be back in the gym uh, very shortly. You had another question? Only one I have at Charles Wright was, I remember us getting uh, emails about the playground you would know more than i bob the the, the blacktop top, black top, well, yes apart black top something. yes that was part of the capital improvement and uh early on in the summer i had reported that it came in over bid right. so at this that. point in time it's going to have to go back out to bid it's okay. not going to get done this fall okay. one of the things that will get done this fall we have our beloved portables um and we have one over at Highcrest that looks shoddy and has some roof issues, so the roof is being repaired. Um, they're hoping to get to the siding, but they don't expect to get to that before the start of the school year. So, again, um, that's the other key piece here is our enrollment study and our facility study. So that was the other major prong of summer facilities. Um, in terms of our enrollment study, Malone McBroom continues to um, do the work. Uh, of the enrollment study. We have approval from the state to get the live birth data. They have gotten that. They have gotten plans of how our buildings look now to compare them with plans of how our buildings were built. Uh, I do expect them to come out and actually do a physical walkthrough of the buildings. Um, thus far, they've been able to give us a, a nice grid of where families are located here in Wethersfield, and we certainly look forward to uh, seeing what they have to say in terms of the long-term trends. One of the interesting pieces, well, actually two pieces in our last working group, they mentioned um, they were surprised at the number of incoming families that were um, renting as opposed to buying houses. 
and they also looked at this year's bubble as a kindergarten, uh, kindergarten bubble is not sustainable. The next two years they anticipate based on the live birth data that we'll actually see a decrease in kindergarten numbers. And then three years out, up again. So it's going to be interesting data, and, and it will give us an opportunity to take a look at what we're seeing long term and how we can better um, distribute our students. Uh, one of the things you look at, you look at Webb Elementary School. Right now, if you take out preschool, you're at about 250 kids. That building is way under-enrolled. And then at Highcrest, as of today, 455. So we've, we've got to balance that out, and that's what we expect our enrollment study to do. In terms of the facility study, um, that did go out to bid over the course of the summer. Uh, Colliers International was successful um, with, with their bid, and they are currently in the process of visiting each school. Uh, they spent the entire day at Charles Wright last week going through the building top to bottom, HVAC, flooring, ceiling, doors, windows meeting with the principal and talking about the, the flow of the, um, of the building. This Friday we'll be over at Hanmer, we'll be spending the day there. Um, my hope is that we can get to Highcrest next. Um, our hope also was that we would be presenting something to you on the 25th of September, but we do expect it may sneak a little bit further out given the fact that Colliers still has a lot to do with facilities assessment. Again, with the facilities assessment, we're looking at feasibility, build new versus renovate. What's the cost going to look like? Which schools are the priority? So we expect to get some great data out of this, and they've been very uh, responsive and um, very helpful thus far. So I look forward to getting some good, solid data for us to use for the future. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I, thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a quick question about the tanks. Um, you, uh, Even though it appeared they came out, and I have no doubt, don't you have to do soil testing as well after they come out and yes sir okay and you're yes. obviously okay that was done all right that, yeah. that's fantastic yep. that was the one question i had and on the floor buckling are, you, are we determined that it wasn't some other sort of water problem underneath the floor not a i mean uh, it had to be a pretty humid situation for and, and is this wood a real thick sort of uh, wood or is it a little thinner or it, it is a it is a thick wood um i actually was able to I only see say it. that because i'm still playing basketball at my advanced age and uh, sort of a pseudo expert on these things so i was just concerned that there was something else afoot. yeah the, the setup uh chris it's a floating floor so it oh, sits okay. it sits on it doesn't sit directly on the floor it sits on one by twos that go um, oh, okay, perpendicular okay. And it has the, the little plastic rubber cleats. Sure. Okay. Um, Answer the question. I, I thought it was just a flat on the, you know, the surface concrete or with a little uh, padding. But and we you. took, you know, the, the leak piece. You make the assumption because there is a bathroom that is adjacent to that gym. So we actually had our maintenance guys go to the nurse's office and uh, get a stethoscope. The I say that I've seen that happen where we yes. had a water leak and literally it, the whole floor was in a... You know, so that's the only reason I asked the question. What, thank what you. My, my wonder with regard to this floor, remember we had it um, sanded and resurfaced. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if the resurfacing created a point where the humidity was trapped underneath the floor and that's what caused it to buckle. It was significant. I know I sent a picture of it and you could see like the fan actually tipped. Mm -hmm. um, it needed to be um, taken care of. And we talked about a, a, a cheap, like a, a high level plywood. And it, you, as a basketball player, you know, and I had that in one of my previous gyms when I was a principal, and you have tremendous dead spots. It's a safety issue. Mm. So it was the right way to go, and it was the middle of the road. Yeah. So, uh, Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions for Michael? Okay. Thank you thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to meetings that have been held. Um, Special Board of Education meeting um, on 7-23. Elaine, would you speak to that? Yes. Um, on Monday, July 23rd, the board had a special board meeting at Stillman to vote to have um, Kelly Haley Evans replace Polly Moon on the board for the remaining three years of Polly's term. <laughs> Ms. Evans brings to the board um, many fresh ideas and is right in the mix of school activities as she has young children in the district. And the whole board unanimously adopted her, or accepted her as part of our team. So welcome the board. 
<laughs> yes, we keep welcoming you. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. Um, and Finance and Information Management Committee that we just held, Kevin? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Kazaka did an excellent job kind of going through the fiscal year 17-18, uh, uh, how we, for essentially the second uh, year in a row, we have about a $20,000 surplus. And, uh, you know, Matt and his team in the business office do a, a terrific job in terms of budgeting with the pendulum swings of the back and forth of the monies we receive from not only the town, but the state kind of going back and forth. Um, it is it is fantastic that we can kind of come in the black for a second year in a row. And to reiterate Matt's point regarding the administrators, um, we've been under a tight budget freeze for longer than any of us really want. Um, but that's the reality of our budget situation. And they've done a terrific job, not only administrators, uh, but the staff in each building uh, really tightening up uh, the wall, so to speak, and working kind of what, with what we have. Um, they cannot be commended enough. Um, you know, we'll see what the future brings in terms of budgeting. Hopefully we don't have to keep on doing this, but uh, we thank them for the, the last couple of years having to um, kind of go through this. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Kevin? Okay, all set. So we do have meetings now being scheduled tomorrow. We have a special Board of Education meeting at 5.30, followed by a Policy and Planning Committee meeting at 6 o'clock. WEC, Weathersfield's Early Childhood Collaborative, is on um, August, uh, September 10th at 4.30. And School Bil Projects Building Committee. You're still doing that? Yes? Still wow. Doing them. They never wow. end. <laughs> um, and that's also on um, September 10th at 6.30. Is there any unfinished business? Anybody out there? All right. So is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. OK. All right. Are there any board comments? Elaine? Um, Mr. Emmett, um, yes. I noticed that um, we sort of have a new website on when I hit the Weathersfield School District. And um, I would like to know if I could, and maybe everybody else is comfortable, and I know Kevin probably is in Mr. Morris's with, with meeting with someone to see how to navigate that. Is there, can I arrange that with sure. Mr. Fennell, uh, uh, Keith? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because it, it's just, I just hit, um, staff and nothing comes up okay so it could be me you know that much <laughs> no <laughs> you know, no so, we'd be uh, we'd be happy to do that and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that again with our website we um in looks an effort, wonderful but it doesn't work for me <laughs> in an effort to save money um rather than expending a huge amount for final site with an out of state yeah, no. company um we did a google-based website that is really it's managed by our own it staff so okay so um, i can call him and absolutely you just okay. contact keith and then what keith will do is he can get you in contact with dave moore and jeff telke whoever who, wants to who, help yeah, yeah co-manage yeah, the website i can so. come in at their convenience and we love just for members of the public we love the feedback on the uh, the uh, I'm sure, website so I'm sure if they're good if i had right. children home they could get me through it mm -hmm. but i don't have any young children home yeah. so <laughs> kelly you want to help me already <laughs> happy to help with that <laughs> um secondly i had this um i love your friday updates and, and maybe other board members um have different thoughts on them but i would like to see an addition and please mrs granado don't take offense or anything I would like to see an addition on that chairman updates because she does so much during a week for this board you know that I none of us get to know about mm -hmm. like I would just like her to say at the bottom chairman's notes um, met with um, somebody at town hall let's just say that the, the person that, on facilities that's it I just would like to know because I see her running around town constantly <laughs> constantly and then if it would help us know where you know it, where she help, is no it would just help me because um i run into people who said um matter of fact i think it was the mayor and she met she said oh i met with bobby and tony and and john john cassio and i said you did you know i i didn't have any clue that that happened and not that it's a big deal but for me it would be 
nice to know that if Bobby agrees to it, it's not something. It's just my personal. Sure. Uh, she does so much. You just activate the tracker on her cell phone. I know no exactly. Is. <laughs> she just is. I see her car everywhere. I saw the other day down the heirloom thing, and I'm going. She's probably got a meeting going on there. You know. So if Bobby feels comfortable sure. adding that no to problem. the bottom of uh, your Friday notes, I'd less just appreciate knowing what's All right. going on. If not. That you just deny that you want to do it, Bob. I'm not, <laughs> but it helps me. <laughs> no, communication is very important. You know, we've talked about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and you do so much for us on your own. You don't ask any of us to go to do it. You run, you know, so. Okay, anyone else for comments? Okay, well, this morning on behalf of the board, I did have the privilege of welcoming our teachers, new teachers, principals, and staff back to school. Um, I did speak of the most remarkable built-in re-energizer for education called the Summer Vacation. And I hope that everyone enjoyed themselves and had time with their loved ones because as we all say, here we go again. Um, I gave a shout out to teachers, principals, and staff for working to prepare our schools for the arrival of the students who are also re-energized. And speaking of our Friday update, I was fascinated with the uh, story of the incoming seventh graders getting their Chromebooks because yes. this board has worked very, very hard yes. to get us one-to-one -one with technology. Um, and they were doing an interactive digital citizenship lesson. Uh, you know, you could tell the kids were so excited. You know, you hear from them that they're very excited. But as I said, it's so exciting for this board as we focused on providing technology to help create um, an innovative learning environment in all our schools. So very pleased with that. Um, we don't have our high school student yet, hopefully for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else for comments? We welcome Kelly again. Thank you so much. And contact any of us if you're confused or. All right. Well. Yeah. Please don't hesitate. <laughs> Thank you. Because it looks very overwhelming <laughs> when you first May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night. That's really a I'm always wondering whether anyone has ever voted against the Just for